right? And it is consistent to um, assume that x, this means no, that x has no alibi. So if x is the beneficiary, if it's provable that x is the beneficiary, and it is consistent to assume that that person has no alibi, then you have to conclude that x is a suspect. It makes total sense, right? If x is the beneficiary, and it is consistent to assume that x has no alibi, then we have to assume that x is a suspect. Hopefully that's, that's clear. And again, if you need to just go through that a little bit, I've broken it down line by line and showed you what each part represents, right? So if it is provable that x is the beneficiary, beneficiary x, and it's consistent to assume that x has no alibi, um, colon negation alibi x, right? And it is consistent to assume that x has no alibi, then conclude that x is the murder suspect, right? Then conclude that x is your murder suspect. So that should be clear. The reasoning for this um, is, is this just makes sense, right? If you are the beneficiary to an inheritance, right? If you're the beneficiary to the inheritance and you don't have an alibi, then you have a motive to kill and thereby you're a suspect. No one's saying that you are the murderer, right? We're not making either um, claims, we're not making um, claims as to your innocent or guilt at this point, right? We're not interested in that at all. What we're saying is there's a motive, right? And, and of course there's a motive. Why? Because you're a beneficiary to a, a big inheritance and it's consistent to assume that you don't have an alibi. Therefore, we have to assume that you're a suspect in the case, right? And as you know, the system can facilitate multiple suspects, right? There might be three or four suspects in the, in the it's like the game of Clue almost, right? Who did it type, who did it type stuff, which I always liked as, as a kid. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to take this, we're going to take it, now we're going to go a step deeper, right? I want to take this sort of very general template, this background concept, and apply it specifically now um, to this justification-based truth maintenance system, right? And the justification-based truth maintenance system is an extremely effective visual, and you know me, all I do is visual, right? This is the best way, I think, to teach, right? Um, and slowly. Now, as far as this justification-based uh, truth maintenance system, the system is a good visual way to um, conceptualize the flexibility of relationships between, um, between you know, different characters, right? Um, and there's going to be an interrelationship between the default logic formalization. This might not make sense right now, so I apologize. This, this is a little bit too technical, but this will make sense later. I, I think I introduced this a little too quickly. But the, our default logic um, sort of structure will be related to the mapping, the designs, which you can see here, right? So that there, there will be interchangeable. And I'll show you how to make um, distinctions and interchange uh, the ideas. So let's construct, based on the ABC murder story, let's construct, let's construct um, uh, a truth maintenance dependency network, right? Obviously this has huge, you know, enormous uh, application for, for, um, for AI development and, and um, computer information systems and stuff. Granted, you need to know how to do all the circuitry stuff, but I don't do that, right? All I do is the logic, right? So um, let's construct a TMS dependency network. So this is called a uh, truth maintenance system dependency uh, network. Okay. Fancy name. We'll go through some sort of fancy images, but it's, it's nothing to be intimidated, right? This will be very, very simple. Okay, so a truth maintenance, um, constructing a TMS dependency network, page 15. A truth maintenance dependency network is, quote, purely syntactic, right? Purely syntactic, domain-independent way of representing belief. It's a purely syntactic, domain-independent way of representing belief. That's key. What does that mean, right? It's a way of representing, and I'll put visually, 
belief. Right? It's a way of representing belief, right? This is a way of, that we're going to represent belief. I believe that Abbott is the primary murder suspect. Why do I believe he's the primary murder suspect? Because, for example, and I'm just throwing this out there, Abbott, um, Abbott is the beneficiary of a large sum of money, and Abbott has no alibi. I showed you how to represent that. Beneficiary X, it is consistent that not alibi X over suspect X, right? That should make sense. And we know how that's read, right? If, um, if it is provable that X is the beneficiary, and it is consistent to assume that X has no alibi, then we have to conclude that X is a suspect, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, attempt to represent this. So on the top of 15, and the, the bottom of 15 and the next page 16 is the same image, so just flip over to page 16 and we'll start there because the image is exactly the same. So let's draw this, this, uh, this uh, TMS, Truth Maintenance System Dependency Network. So we have suspect, right? Abbott is a suspect. As we said before, early in the notes, we have an arrow going up, a node, plus, minus, beneficiary, Abbott, alibi, Abbott, we have enlist, I'll explain all of this. We have outlist. We have supported belief. And then we have justification. And I'm going to sort of section this off so you can see it well. Okay, so that should be clear, right? This is, is exactly the same, exactly the same system that we have, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm surprised I never went into detail uh, describing it. I'll, I'll describe this, and then I'll return to the notes. Okay, so at the top, right, this first bracket is our initial assumption. This is very important, right? This is very important, and please remember that, right? You're gonna, you, you stand up. A chance of getting lost if you don't keep that in mind, right? Our initial assumption is that Abbott is a suspect in the murder case, okay? So this is our supported belief, right? We believe that Abbott is an initial suspect in the murder case. And what we need is we need to construct justifications to support this belief. Justifications to support this belief. Very simple, right? I believe that Abbott is the primary murder suspect, I need justifications to support that belief. What I do then, and this is the, the this is why I love sort of visual representations because, it, and this is why I think the book is so amazing specifically, because I went through a lot of textbooks to try and get something that was user friendly to introduce the concepts, and I, I, I ultimately found it. You can tell by this simple notation system, right, this plus minus system, right? right? Those things that support the belief and those things that do not support the belief, right? My in-list, I'll talk about this in a second, my in-list and my out-list, right? Obviously, it's the case that because Abbott is the primary suspect, we believe that Abbott is the primary suspect, then him being a beneficiary supports, justifies our initial assumption, right? The fact that Abbott is the primary murder suspect is supported by, right? is supported by the fact that he's a beneficiary. And remember, we just did the logic, right? Um, I'm not gonna write the whole thing out, I'm just abbreviate it. Beneficiary X is consistent with not having an alibi X over being a suspect X, right? The fact that Abbott is a beneficiary to the inheritance supports, is justified, is a, a source of justification to support a belief that he actually killed a person, right? Because you have something to gain in the other person's death, right? Which means that um, the suspect, you can see that the suspect here and the suspect here, the relationship between um, the dependency network and our